Before we begin, press the subscribe button and click on this bell icon so you get the notification for my videos every time. Today we will talk about systematic reviews. Everything about systematic reviews in today's session. What is a systematic review? In order to understand what a systematic review is, In order to understand what a systematic review is, you need to understand different kinds of articles first. Traditional review, the most common type. Then comes the systematic review. Then comes the third one meta-analysis so what is a traditional review traditional review systematic review what are review articles review articles are secondary research we call it as desk research because we do it on desk i don't know if that is the logic desk research so we do you do it on desk and uh, it's uh, it's uh, a secondary research and in in systematic reviews and in traditional reviews, in meta-analysis, one thing is common. You collect data from previously published papers. In review articles, you collect data from previously published papers. So remember, this is very important. You collect data from previously published papers and your whole paper will be a combination of other people's papers. Easy language, I'm telling you in easy language. Your paper will be a mixture of other people's papers you combine information from previously published papers related to your topic and you formulate a beautiful paper combining their their papers just like essay writing when you write a story or an essay you have some things data in your mind you're thinking about it but in in traditional review or any system any kind of review you collect data from previously published sources So you collect information from other papers and your whole paper will actually be 90%, I would say, 6, 70, 80, 80% would be other people's papers. You combine them together and the remaining will be your ideas and your thoughts. What do you think about it? But you will not be doing any experiment with real patients here. Same thing here. Same thing here. So in traditional review, usually they are broad. The question, research question or topic is broad, but in systematic review and meta-analysis, it's narrowed to the point. Here, traditional review, the research question, we don't need any PICO, PICO question. We can just start with a regular question. Here, we do need PICO or we may not. If you want to follow PICO and you want to write a systematic review with all four components, then actually it will become a meta-analysis. Highly likely it will become a meta-analysis because it will become statistical. So we'll talk about this PICO question and everything. So I don't want to confuse you right now. Just remember for this, uh, for, for now, just remember for now, broad, narrowed, narrowed. Systematic review and meta-analysis are narrowed. Traditional review are broad. Now, traditional reviews will have, will follow no guidelines, no guidelines, no checklist. You just write as you like it. Method results, methods and results section are optional. Methods and results section are optional. So you narrative review. Yes. Narrative review. We also call it as narrative. This is also known as narrative review. This is also known as narrative review because you write it like a narration, like a story. So traditional review is also known as narrative review. It's usually broad. No guidelines are followed. Everyone can have their own style of the paper, their own style, their own sequence, whatever you like. Method and results are optional. So you will see so many review articles without method and results no checking of quality so all good and bad quality papers can be included 
that's why the traditional review evidence is not one of the highest in the world because it can have bias because you're including all kinds of papers that's a traditional review usually if you're working on a thesis in phd you do the literature search and you write your traditional review is also ready you you bring a research gap and then you justify that okay this is why i'm doing this thesis my my project because there is a gap and i have published this paper already you can justify this by showing even a traditional review you show a gap in the traditional review now another name for traditional review literature review many people say what is literature review this has three names traditional review narrative review and literature review literature review but when we search data from previous published sources we also call this process as literature review so literature review process is done here too in this paper in this paper but if we if i say write a literature review paper publish a literature review paper i am actually saying that publish a traditional review i hope you understand the point traditional review has three names narrative review and literature review traditional review has three names narrative review traditional review and so many other names critical review anything other than systematic review you can say okay that's a traditional review if it's if it's a review and and in traditional review we do the literature search we'll do literature review but we also call it as literature review that's the name of the article too that's the name of the study design too So remember, literature review is actually a process. We do literature review when we collect previously published papers. So yes, we do literature review, but we will not call it a literature. We will call it a systematic review because literature review name is only confined to traditional reviews. In systematic reviews, we do literature review. How much? 80 90% only 10% will be or it or 20% will be your suggestions your ideas but just like this your paper main data and everything will be included of previously published papers the third one is meta analysis systematic review becomes meta analysis if it's statistical that's it and it is that statistical that you need to do data analysis statistical data analysis through a software and what is the most common software review manager review manager is the most common software to do meta analysis most famous there are many other softwares too you can use any of those people use different softwares but review manager is the most famous one so i did not say that i did not say that uh, there is only one software remember this please don't confuse this review manager is one of the most famous ones but there are other softwares for data analysis for meta analysis now what is meta analysis a systematic review becomes meta analysis when it becomes statistical statistical and of course your research question plays an important role in making a meta analysis if your question is such that that you now have to do meta analysis then this systematic review will be known as systematic review plus meta analysis because you go through this journey you complete systematic review and the next step is the meta analysis but if you are scared of meta analysis you don't want to do that then just write a qualitative systematic review make sure it doesn't become statistical just by excluding the comparison comparison group telling you an easy way just by removing a comparison group in your research question but you don't discuss anything about a comparison group your systematic review will remain qualitative and you will not have to go into deep statistics
that's one way to avoid it but may not work all the time may become statistical so what else is systematic review all about systematic review follows certain guidelines what guidelines the most famous ones prisma guidelines preferred reporting items of systematic reviews and meta analysis preferred reporting items for systematic reviews and meta analysis preferred reporting items for systematic reviews and meta analysis these guidelines they have a checklist you just google go to simply go go, go and just google it prisma checklist and you will see so many websites showing you prisma ch checklist template you can find it anywhere it's free it's free available for everyone even in the images of, on google you can find prisma checklist prisma checklist you make sure your paper is according to prisma guidelines and prisma checklist if your paper is according to prisma guidelines and checklist then it's a systematic review so now the question is do you think meta analysis will need prisma guidelines prisma checklist absolutely absolutely because systematic review becomes meta analysis systematic review will become meta analysis now systematic review will follow guidelines prisma guidelines you will have a narrow research question usually you follow pico format but you may not follow you can remove the com comparison group so that it doesn't become statistical and try to keep it qualitative if you want to finish a systematic uh, systematic review faster don't make it quantitative what do i mean by qualitative and quantitative quantitative means numbers and statistics is involved you try to avoid statistics if you are in a hurry if you want to complete a systematic review faster then try to find a research question that does not go into statistics you will learn more and more with experience of course and we'll teach you all of these things in the complete course as we move forward in the course so now you understand you don't need pico in the traditional review but can you of course you can but not mandatory here you can bring highly recommended without comparative group if you are in a hurry but if you're not in a hurry then go with comparative group and see if it goes into the meta analysis and now third thing is method and result section are almost mandatory because they are required by prisma they are required by prisma so they are mandatory they are mandatory method and results let me make it clear method and results method and results section are mandatory because they are required by prisma you also need to draw a prisma flow diagram that's mandatory here you just simply draw regular tables and figures but here prisma flow diagram is a must prisma flow diagram comes over here in the meta analysis too because if it becomes meta analysis remember meta analysis is the extension of a systematic review systematic review becomes meta analysis systematic review becomes meta analysis so remember this now what else you have a robust inclusion exclusion criteria you so here you had an option whether to keep an inclusion exclusion criteria or not but here you must have an inclusion exclusion criteria and it is also required by prisma so you have an inclusion exclusion criteria that these kind of um, this will be my focus male patients or heart failure patients so you have a strict inclusion exclusion criteria what kind of data you will collect what kind of data you will collect And then the quality 
here you did not check quality, but here you will check quality of every article that you have included in your paper. Your systematic review, let's say, is a combination of 50, 50 papers. So you have to check the quality of each paper. Paper 1, paper 2, paper 3, paper 4, paper 5, paper 6, paper 7, paper 8, paper 9, paper 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, until 20. Until 50. All 50 papers, you will check the quality of all 50 papers. Usually, what is the length of a systematic review? Minimum five references. Yes, minimum five references, I would suggest. And go up to 50. Of course, there are bigger. There is no universal consensus on how big a systematic review can be. It depends upon your need, your research question. But as a new person, if you are writing a systematic review for the first time, try to concise it to 50 references. I would say five if there is no data available. But try to keep it between 20 and 50, 20 and 50 references, 20 and 50 articles. So that's systematic review and meta-analysis and traditional review difference. Now the steps. We will talk about these steps. What are these steps? What is a systematic review? Why do we call it a systematic review? Now the point is why do we call it a systematic review? Remember, this class is not on traditional review. So we are not talking about traditional review today. We will do that some other day. And you have plenty of videos already. We are not talking about statistical part here today. We are talking about the systematic review. Some students call it as systemic review. This is the biggest mistake. Don't call it a systemic review. Call it a systematic review. Systematic review. Systematic review. Systematic review. Don't call it systemic. Systematic review. Now, what does that mean? As the name suggests, you have to develop a system. Why? Because, now let me give you an example. In traditional reviews, if I give, if I give a similar topic, same topic, to five students, if I give five of you the same topic, exact same topic, let's say, congestive heart failure and skin problems. Let's say this is my topic. I give you that target to write a traditional review. All five of you will write a different paper. Some of you will have different references, different, different references altogether, different style, different headings. All five paper will be different. But a systematic review follows a system. It means anyone who follows the system will produce exact same results, will produce exact same papers again and again, even after 100 years. When we die after 100 years, of course, we all probably will, will be dead unless somebody is uh, really, really um, uh, don't know, genetically uh, immune to death. So... I mean, that was now that was a joke. So anyways, now. Even after 100 years, if somebody sees your systematic review and opens it and says, OK, is it a re is it a good system or not? Let's check. Am I getting the exact same papers as this person claims? He will run your system step by step and he or she will confirm and will say, wow, what a scientist 100 years ago. He wrote a, a, a systematic review and I checked it today after 100 years, 2000, uh, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21. Yeah. So in 21, 21, uh, when you will have another pandemic, Borona virus, probably every 100 years uh, a pandemic comes. So maybe maybe a Borona virus going on and this scientist wants to study previous papers. What happened 100 years ago? during the coronavirus times 
So now um, he is searching and he searches your paper and he finds exact, he follows the system and he found, he finds exact same papers. So he says, wow, during this, the last pandemic, 2021 and 2020, this scientist, this group of scientists, they were amazing. They were amazing. They were amazing. Literally, they created a system that even if I follow today, I get the same results. I get the same results. So how do we create such a system? So remember, step one, number one, I want you to remember creating a system. We are creating a system. We are creating a system. Now, systematic review system is divided into divided into, I would say, three, three phases, three phases, phase one, phase two, and phase three, phase one, phase two, phase three, phase one is simply planning. And we'll talk about this. Phase two is complicated. It has many steps. Phase three is a little easier. Now, what are these phases? So everyone take out a piece of paper or a notebook and a pen. And let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Phase one of a systematic review. What is the first thing? First step, I'm talking about phase one because we, there are three phases, right? Well, we are working on the first phase of systematic review. That means your first two days. I want you to just spend two days on phase one and then next few days on phase two, next few days on phase two. Phase three. So phase one. So don't get scared. If you divide the phases into days, you can easily do a systematic review. How do you eat an elephant? You eat an elephant one bite at a time. This is an example we give in addiction counseling that how do you eat an elephant when, when they say, how can I be sober? I haven't, uh, I have been using drugs. How can I be sober? So we tell the client, we tell the patient that one bite at a time. Elephant is eaten one bite at a time. That means one day at a time. So one day at a time. You don't need to complete your whole systematic review in one day. Calm down, relax, step by step, one step at a time. Now, phase one, what is the first step? Step one of phase one, open Prisma checklist in front of you. I want all of you to open a Prisma checklist document copy, if you can print it out right next to you. That's your first step so that you don't forget that your systematic review has to follow this guideline. That's the step number one. Second is research question. Now, let's say your topic is your topic is. let's say, um, what medication should I write down here? Acetalopram. Acetalopram plus itching. So you are focusing on that. So how do you create a research question? Research question can be of various kinds. And you have already gone through it 
during the course it is discussed in the videos too so i will not go into the detail of research question how to create research question i assume you already know how to create a research question but i'll give a brief highlight that ideally what is preferred is it is called as pico question pico means p for population or a problem i for intervention c for comparison o for outcome so these are the these are the things pico question so you bring male patients male depressed patients that's your patient population who take acetalopram intervention male depressed patients intervention is acetalopram and the outcome is they develop an itch in comparison to those people who don't take acetalopram if you have a comparison group as well if you're focusing on that it will become a bigger bigger question so right now just focus on a question without a comparative group so this is how you create a research question you can yes you now many people will be thinking why did he say don't include this comparison group i said yes you can if you want if you want a shorter paper a non statistical qualitative paper then you don't otherwise it it is it is going to be a meta analysis very soon so i'm just giving you options giving you options now this is how how the research question is developed so you have a research question pico question so research question is ready i'll clean the board so you guys can see you open the prisma checklist in front of you second step is you create your research question what is the third step create a separate document and call it as data sheet or protocol data sheet or protocol this is a very very important thing everything that you will do you will record on this page on your protocol page on your data sheet page every single step because everything is actually your plan and this is exactly your method is so this is going to help you in writing your method section and what else proposal is needed for anyone has an idea oh sorry protocol what what is proposal uh, protocol 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 sorry what is protocol needed for protocol is needed for the fourth step that is registration of your systematic review now for registration where do we go there is a website prospero prospero so you go and register your systematic review on prospero as the last step but this step the fourth step is optional is optional don't worry about it it is important more it is important for clinical trials for clinical trials you have to register on um, uh, the registration websites but in systematic review and meta analysis you don't have to it's not mandatory it's recommended and it's uh, it's optional but if you ask my view first of all why do we do registration why do we do registration so that the future scientists should know that somebody is writing a paper on systematic review on acetalopram in male depressed patients causes itch itching so when i register it other scientists will be able to see that okay so x dr xyz or dr hasan tohid that's me is working on 
a system systematic review of this topic that means we have to focus on something else so they will see your protocol you will submit your protocol there they will see your protocol they will understand what you are doing what you are focusing on and what databases are you focusing on if you just focus on uh, pubmed then they can say okay he's writing a paper just simply on pubmed related topics so why can't we do a same topic but we focus on other databases so that's how protocol and registration can help future scientists decide whether they should work on your paper or not on the topic or not if somebody already has the idea if somebody already has the idea they drop the idea they say okay this is done so we can't do it we shouldn't do it we can do it and we shouldn't do it so the phase 1 you start with the prisma checklist you open it you create your research question and then you create your protocol data sheet page and once that is done everything is done on your plan what do you want to do what are you planning to do you register it once it it's re, it is registered once it is registered other people will be able to see if your paper is Uh, I mean, uh, if if a top if the topic has been taken by somebody else, so they focus on another topic. Now, why I don't support registering systematic reviews or any article whatsoever, I don't recommend. You know why? I have my own reasons to believe. The reason is that let's say I select a topic, same topic, acetylopram. in depressed patients causes itching and i'm looking at the association and i have written a protocol i submitted and registered it and i die tomorrow i die tomorrow registration websites will not mention that this scientist died and this research project has stopped they will not know they will not know so what is the issue now that means nobody will ever work on this paper nobody will ever work on that paper that's why i am against registration many people ask me argue with me why do you don't agree with the registration that's why because many scientists have passed away they have died and now we don't know if the topic is still going on if this person is still working on that paper for past 5 years this has been in the list other people are thinking oh maybe the scientists are still working on that paper this is going to be a very high quality paper 5 years 5 years but they don't understand probably that he died the very first year for past 4 years the name is there or for past 1 uh, year the name is here and nobody else is working on it but the scientist passed away 11 months ago So that's why I believe registration is not needed. This is the first phase. So make sure you have your document ready with a title, protocol, and data sheet, or data sheet. So you will have a, a document ready, one document separate on a Word document or any similar document. You call it as protocol. On protocol, you will mention your research question. on the data sheet and you will have the prisma guidelines attached to it right next to it because everything will be according to prisma and then registration as i said my students don't need to register so this this is the phase 1 congratulations the phase 1 is done that means two more phases left for a systematic review i want your full attention now this is something that needs focus phase 2 has certain points phase 2 has certain points
search strategy. Is that the correct spelling? Search strategy. Search strategy. That means how will you search your papers? How will you search your papers? Now, how do we do it? How do we do it? The first thing first is, the first thing first is, just on PubMed or on Google or any website that can give you the research papers. First of all, where do you find research papers? On databases. So this is a very basic thing I'm telling you. Databases are the websites where you will find papers. So what are the most famous websites? Or databases you call it databases from now onwards you will not call a research related website where there are research papers available a website you will call it as database scientist terminologies scientist terminology database a website that has research papers available is known as database most famous database for medical students and doctors and healthcare professionals PubMed, PubMed, another one, Medline, another one, PubMed Central. Now, these are all one family. So don't worry about it. Just PubMed is fine. So these three are one family by the same organization, National Library of Medicine. Second common database, second common database is Web of Science. Third one, Embase, PsycInfo, Cochrane Library, so many, and Google Scholar. The last one is Google Scholar. Google Scholar still is becoming better and better, so we keep it as the last option. So there are so many databases, but I'm just telling you the common names. So let's say you go on PubMed first, PubMed website. In the search bar, you write down depression, patients, itching, acetylopram, and you search it. See what results are showing. Or just write down itching and acetylopram and see what is available. What is available? If there are plenty of papers, I would say if in last five years you have at least 100 papers talking about that topic, just by one look. That means you have selected the right topic. If it is not giving you enough papers, then you change the topic. Maybe focus on another problem rather than itching or focus on another medication. Change the topic. If there are very few papers available, I would say for my students, if less than 100, hold on. If less than 100 articles are available all together, then move to a new topic. If more than 100 articles are available in last five years, more than 100 in five years, that means you have hit a jackpot. That means you can write a wonderful paper now. Even a traditional review, you can write a wonderful traditional review if you have these many papers available. So search strategy, we are deciding our search strategy. We haven't done anything yet. We just first confirmed if the research question was correct. So we were actually still at stay phase one. Now we are entering into phase two. We have confirmed our topic is good. Our topic is good. Now, the first thing first is decide an inclusion exclusion criteria. Inclusion exclusion criteria. What do you include in the inclusion exclusion criteria? What, what do you include? Patients? What kind of patients, male patients, female patients, what kind of studies, clinical trial, non-clinical trial, uh, 
or uh, or or let's say um, there is a list. There is a list of things you can do in inclusion exclusion criteria. Okay, so now give me a second. We will go deeper into inclusion exclusion criteria. We will go deeper into inclusion exclusion criteria if you don't know how to do it. But it's so simple. You just decide. You are the boss of your own paper. How do you decide inclusion exclusion criteria? Your research question. Your research question will give you an idea what your inclusion exclusion criteria is. So let's say your inclusion criteria is male because we were focusing on male depressed patients. We will focus on depressed patients in psychiatry, not other, any other patients. We'll focus on pa patients with the symptoms of itching. We'll focus on the studies that are non-randomized because there is no control group. So we now know exactly what we are focusing on. So this is how you will decide the inclusion exclusion criteria. I'll give you the examples later that what are possible kinds of inclusion that you can do depending upon your paper. For me, for the topic that I mentioned, my inclusion criteria comes out to be like this. Male patients, and maybe maybe I can also include, um, besides clinical uh, non-randomized trial, I can also include clinical trials to see what is available. Maybe I can include some observational studies and see what is available. Maybe some case studies. Okay? So that's something. That's something you can do, inclusion, exclusion. But we will, we will go deeper later. Because I want you to differentiate between inclusion, exclusion criteria and screening of papers later. So your inclusion, exclusion criteria is hidden in your research question. Hidden in your research question. Now, the next thing is you decide, select the databases that you will use. Means websites you will use. So you select databases, you start with, let's say PubMed, if you are a healthcare student, of course, PubMed. Your next one will be Web of Science. Next will be Cochrane or Cochrane. Or the next will be Embase, PsycInfo. So you just decide five databases as your main to go databases that during your publication process, during your systematic review process, you will just find data on these five websites and nothing else. So you are just deciding. And if you have time, then of course you can go to as many databases as possible, as many databases as possible, but we don't have enough time. Set a deadline and sh Choose like two databases. I usually choose two databases if I want to finish a paper fast. PubMed and uh, maybe maybe Web of Science or Google Scholar. Anyone besides PubMed. So yeah, I have two databases. So now, you know your databases. You know your inclusion exclusion criteria. Now, what else do you know? You should know. What else should you know? Your keywords and your... Now, this is a new na name for many, right? Subject heading. Or we call it as controlled vocabulary. Controlled vocabulary. Controlled vocabulary. So, you need to decide your keywords for your paper. Let's say my paper was, again, let's say I write the same thing. Acetalopram, my topic, male patients, depressed patients, and they have itch. So these are my ideal paper, right? My, my um, niche, niche market, 
in the business terminology. So that's my topic. So what, how do I decide my keywords? It's simple. Keywords are here. What is the main, main uh, big things you can see on your research question? Acetylopram, depression, and itch. These are my three keywords. depression and acetylopram and itch these three are my keywords now what else can be my keywords can you think of more keywords so you have to try to think more and more try to now remember in the search strategy we should go and follow the style that's called building block, building block style. So you, your first keyword, keyword acetylopram. Second keyword, depression. Third keyword, itch. You will you will you will you will search just like in google when you go to google and search something you search acetylopram and you will guide you will get the papers right or the information related to that medication but are there other options are there other options are there other medication yes any market name what is the market name? Maybe I'm not sure. Lexapro. Lexapro is the market name. So you, yes, it can give you the papers related to acetylopram. And what else? Antidepressant. Anti-anxiety. You can go up to three, four, maybe five keywords. Just think about it. What? And now second keyword depression. Can there be something similar to depression? sadness, grief. What else will give me more papers related, re related to depression? Major depressive disorder, MDD. The whole name major depressive disorder. Dysthymia, some other terminologies similar to depression. So I have five keywords related to depression. I have five keywords related to acetylopram or maybe three. And I have three or five, maybe four keywords related to itch, as much as I could think. Let's say for itch, I could only find itching, pruritus, pruritus. So I could only find these keywords that can help me find papers. So these will be my search, searching keywords. But are these enough? No. They are not enough. We always do a combined search. Keywords plus keywords plus the control vocabulary. Remember, control vocabulary, the mesh keywords, are a unique or strange thing by adopted by certain databases. For example, um, PubMed. PubMed has it. I think PsychInfo has it. A couple of more databases have the mesh strategy. So when you are using those databases, you will have to use regular keywords plus mesh keywords. If a database has does not have mesh keywords, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Then you don't need to worry about it. You just follow keywords. That's it. Your keywords will be your search strategy. But on PubMed, PsychInfo, these big ones, they will have the control vocabulary, the subject heading way of searching data. So does it make sense? I'll repeat again. Keywords will be used on all databases, but on certain data databases like PubMed, 
and some other databases that have the system of control vocabulary, we cannot just rely on keywords if it's a systematic review. We must rely on both control vocabulary, also known as subject heading, and in, uh, in PubMed terminology or on PubMed, it is known as medical subject heading, MESH. MESH strategy, MESH keywords. So you will do the regular keywords plus MESH keywords. So remember, how did we decide our keywords? By the research question. How do we decide our inclusion exclusion criteria? By the research question. And how do we decide our inclusion, uh, our mesh keyword? Now that's a challenge, right? No, it's not a challenge, it's very easy. Actually, you will learn more with experience, that's true. But what if I tell you a, a shortcut, a secret that makes you really perfect? That makes you really perfect. So your search strategy will be your keywords plus mesh, right? On PubMed or just sub subject heading, control vocabulary on other databases. Remember, I think there are only four databases that have the mesh, the subject heading strategy. So you will rely on this and you will rely on this. You cannot just rely on this. You only rely on this on if you are just searching web of science or you are searching Google Scholar, then you don't need this, this, ha ha this problem. Then you don't need this problem. If your database to go is Google Scholar or Web of Science, then you don't need this stress of mesh. But is mesh strategy a stress? No. How do you find the mesh keyword for your paper? Go to PubMed website. Go to the PubMed website. In the search bar, in the search bar, just in the search bar, write down your research question. Just the main keywords of your research question. Now, many would say, what is he doing? Yes, I'm telling you a secret. Listen to me. This is very important. In the search bar, you will now appreciate what I'm saying. You search in your pub, uh, PubMed search bar. The three big things were acetalopram, depression, and itching or pruritus. Then you click search. Once you click on search, it will show you some papers. Now, quickly go through all the papers and see which paper is the most relevant to these three words. Or which article is the closest to these. You will definitely find one once you found one you click on it you click the click on the paper once you click on the paper on pubmed don't go to the full paper just the pubmed link on the right corner you will see the mesh strategy and at the bottom you will see the mesh strategy what these scientists used you now know what is the mesh keyword that you need to use magic You get the major keyword now. Mesh keyword is again done in the same way. The mesh strategy is also done in the same way. You divide it into three because you had three main things to focus on in your research paper. We call it as a building block approach. Building block approach. That means the first one is depression. Second one is Wow, this, this is going to be very, very interesting. Someday I'll share my screen with you guys. And I will literally show you how it is done. So that you know exactly how it is done. So you have the keywords. And we are on phase two, right? We are on phase two. In phase two, you have the keywords and you have the mesh. You have three keywords, right? Uh, not three, not three. You have five of these, four of these, three of these, maybe five of these. These were your keywords, right? Remember, these were your keywords. If you don't understand, watch the video again. Watch the video again. I will keep it here 
and you can keep uh, watch it fast forward if you feel is wasting time but it is really important you need to understand this you have the keywords and the similar way you will have now the mesh see the similar mesh keyword that is used in that in that uh, article so let's say your depression mesh keyword is depression one is depression and if you see on pubmed i wish i could show to you in the next session i will that on the pubmed on the mesh page when you write depression now you will have an option to add that strategy as your search strategy so you click on add and you can add more points in here maybe you will find something depression and acetaloprem maybe 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 antidepressant in your search strategy in your so in your mesh tree in your mesh tree pubmed will give you more options that why don't you try this or why don't you try this why don't you try this maybe this will work better for your paper so you keep your research question in mind and start looking at the tree the tree the tree paper your t t uh, research question now click on it add it as your strategy so let's say depression plus something is your search strategy that is added you click on add and then you copy paste it here on your protocol page on your data sheet page or protocol page the second thing you will do is some people will say why on protocol page it's okay if you don't want to do it just at least maybe on a simple rough page you should have a data sheet that's very important and you have to be very very organized you have to be very very organized so depression and something acetaloprem what is the mesh for that see whatever is the mesh search uh, mesh keyword for acetaloprem pubmed will show you there is a button says mesh there are two ways you can find mesh and the third way is by directly opening any paper and going at the bottom there are different ways i will share the screen and i will explain to you in the next session so that you guys know how mesh strategy is actually done now the third one is pruritus or itching whatever is the mesh keyword used and you want to add something or not doesn't matter so now are only mesh keywords enough no mesh keywords are never enough because because some papers are now being added with different keywords not with mesh keywords so mesh alone is not enough similarly simple keywords are not enough so you need to combine all all of them this and this so now you will copy paste this one and bring it here so you will have a whole line now major depression mesh strategy plus the search strategy of the keywords so you will have something like this mesh strategy plus regular keywords 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 keyword number 2 3 4 5 mesh 2 second keyword mesh strategy plus the keyword 1 keyword 2 keyword 3 keyword 4 keyword 5 mesh strategy 3 same keyword 1 we had three keywords for this right for each itch itching and pruritus so itch itching and pruritus and you have this strategy now now each keyword one by one you run this in the search bar this terminology you search in the pubmed search bar and you click on it and whatever number it shows 5600 to let's say you will keep it saved you will mention it here right next to it that this strategy gave me these many papers 
The second strategy gave me these many papers. The third strategy gave me these many papers. Why do you need these numbers? You will need these numbers to write in your method section. You will need these numbers. So this is how the search strategy is done. Mesh plus keyword, total number. Mesh plus keyword for the second keyword, total number. Mesh plus the keyword for the third, third, third important point. And now you have strategy complete strategy of search and you have the total number of papers now you add them that these many papers were found in pubmed because we are talking about mesh only these many papers were found let's say total all three together uh let's say are 1109 papers so 1109 papers were just found on pubmed and this was all after inclusion exclusion criteria general search initially gave you like 6000 papers so after applying the inclusion exclusion criteria and the proper search strategy you have now 1109 papers left now can you apply if it's still a lot can you apply a, a, a rigid a filter you can apply a rigid filter that can be another inclusion criteria last five years once you focus on last five years now you are doing screening you are looking at these papers quickly now the article screening what is article screening you look at your abstracts and titles quickly abstract and title quickly as soon as possible as soon as possible and you decide which ones to keep which ones not to keep some are 100 percent in some are 100 percent out some are 50 50 you are not sure so those who are you are not sure about whether to keep them or not and those you are sure about just keep them remove everything else and those you are not sure about get the full papers full papers are some, sometimes available on pubmed and on researchgate and you can contact the main author ask them maybe they will be able to provide you with the full paper so ideally this is how you will do it so you get the full papers of those you had a doubt about and you rely on the abstract you were confirmed about and if the full paper is available wonderful and you will finally finally on pubmed to be very honest let's say after after screening after screening you will hardly have like 50 papers available on pubmed now the second database you will do the same thing but if it's web of science you don't do it if it's uh, Mbase, look at it. Is control vocabulary available for that? I'll provide you the names of the databases that provide control vocabulary where you have to do keywords plus mesh. Now, if it's a traditional review, then you are a hero. You don't need to worry about mesh. You just write down keywords like this. But of course, if you want to bring mesh, that's wonderful. So total 50 articles are left and let's say this was total results from PubMed. So you have the record that what exact search strategy you used three times and each strategy gave you these many numbers after adding and you got that that kind of number and after screening and applying the strict filters inclusion exclusion criteria you only got 56 papers in the end. So that's what PubMed gave you 56 and then Prisma guidelines wants you to write down the exact strategy of one more database. So follow the same approach on another database like PubMed. Maybe Medline. Medline is actually an, another database. It's all the, all the same family though, but it's a database. So maybe Medline, you do the same thing and or, or PubMed Central, you do the same thing and you you get the results so you now have two databases record of keywords and mesh and total number of papers keywords and mesh and total number of papers now how do you do delete duplicates because if you search with the similar keywords on different database don't you think you will find similar papers some papers will be similar let's say on the on other database let's say we use google scholar and you found 69 papers but don't you think many will be repetition 
so you will just keep those that are new that are not there so let's say 19 are only new everything else is repeat so total it should be it should be somewhere like 75 papers right but how do you delete duplicates if you have endnote like uh, reference manager download the basic endnote it's free download and load endnote basic or mandalay this free you should have it gradually play along with it and you will learn it but if you don't have it that's fine but i recommend that go ahead and do that learn more so you have this 75 studies but how do you delete duplicates the if you just simply google it how to delete duplicates on endnote it will show you how to do that but can i tell you an easy way you copy paste all the results that you found on PubMed initially, all the papers, you put them on Excel sheet. The same thing you do on a separate page on Excel sheet, all the papers you found by Google Scholar. Now on the third page, you copy paste Google Scholar papers and you copy paste PubMed papers. It will automatically add and Excel will tell you the repeated information. You organize them according to the author sequence and choose in the, on the top on, on Excel sheet. They will ask you if you want to keep it with abstract. Once you do that, you remove the duplicates. It's so easy manually. It will show you what, what, what in a different color. That this is a repetition, this is a repetition, this is a repetition. Many people say, I cannot do repetition, I hate EndNote. Just do it on Excel sheet. It's so simple. It's so simple. So this is how we do the search strategy. Now, uh, remember, keywords plus mesh. And what is mesh? Mesh is like a hashtag. You know, on Facebook and LinkedIn, you see hashtags. It's just like hashtag. It will give you exact topics but it, it it will still miss some papers that's why we need both we need both and how do we find mesh keyword now you know how to do it another way of finding mesh strategy if you cannot find your ideal mesh strategy call a librarian call a librarian of any university just ask them can you please send me this is my topic I'm struggling to find my mesh key, my mesh strategy. Can you help me with the mesh strategy in PubMed? They will help you. Librarians are really, really wonderful and experts in this. But why can't you become an expert like them? You can. And you, you do that by doing it again and again, by trying different databases. Oh, sorry. And different mesh keywords and see which one gives you more papers more relevant papers try different strategies and you will be able to uh, understand which is better for me i would recommend go with a mesh strategy that gives you the maximum amount of papers in comparison to any any other strategy that is given to you by pubmed as a suggestion in the tree don't do that one by one, see which one has more results. Go for that. That is your mass strategy. And then you have your keywords. Then you mix them together. Then you search. Now you will have wonderful results. And you can confirm if PubMed is really giving you the best results. Mesh keyword alone, search that mesh keyword and see how many papers are given. And mesh keyword and if you have If you have the correct number of papers, then it will show you with your mesh and keyword, whatever those keywords alone were showing and whatever this was showing, simply the mesh. You add them together and you can calculate if if the whole mesh strategy is really giving me the best results. I, is it giving me the right number? You can get an idea out there. But now before searching, one thing you need to remember, Boolean search. You cannot simply just search in a search bar without Boolean search. You cannot combine mesh strategy with your keywords without Boolean search. What is the Boolean search? What is the Boolean search?
there are three things and or and not all capital this is a rule all capital all uppercase you cannot have them small if you enter let's say heart and let's say kidney so if you are searching for heart and kidney you put this and so it will show you those papers who must talk about both in the same paper same abstract and title so if you want to search and advance your search strategy you can mention and in, in between in some some keywords repeat it now another way is to get more results or capital or once you put that in the search bar now it will show you more results because it means the paper will either talk about this or this and definitely it will talk about those two that were there so it's bigger than and and was just giving you those if they work together in one paper but or will give you even if they are separate and the third one is not heart not kidney so it will just show you papers to talk about heart without involvement of kidney so this is how you can keep changing keep adding your keywords more and more by and and by or and by not by and by or and not and your whole search strategy can become really big and keep it safe you have to save it you have to save it because you will mention exactly as it is all three points all three big strategies along with how many papers it showed on your method section in your paper it is required by prisma checklist and of course the results section see the prisma checklist method and results section you will understand what i'm talking about it will need that and then in the end pubmed when you click on advance it can it will ask you an option do you want to get emails when similar articles are published then you click and add your email address there they will send you the email and let you know if a similar or new article on the with the same mesh keyword is published so you can add that right away so that's why it is very important that on your protocol and on your data sheet you should mention the dates exact dates and time when you started search see this now this is getting a little complicated but this is very very wo uh, enjoyable process you will love it you just divide it into chunks one one day at a time small task and you will be able to do it if you really really want to do a systematic review otherwise go with a traditional review okay so now this is very important and i will wrap up for this session and we'll continue in another session from here and then we will do another session combining everything where i will share my screen and give you an example so don't worry we will repeat it again and again until you become an expert on systematic reviews so don't get scared today if it's the first time you are hearing these things of course many of you are so don't get scared watch the video again then watch the video third time and fast forward and then attend the second class then attend the third class keep repeating the process and you will see you will become an expert it will become so easy so they will send you email and remind you let you know that new papers are um, are there so that's why the starting time of your phase 1 you always write a date that when did you start january 6th or 7th 2021 let's say this is the date you started and when did you start data search with your keyword search strategy when did you start your search strategy you will mention it 
you will mention it january 8th maybe 12 pm eastern time this is the search strategy that was visible at that time with the keyword with the mesh keyword and this so that other people can verify so the time is very important the time the year is very important during your search strategy and then in systematic reviews what else you can add besides other papers from databases gray literature gray literature what is gray literature gray literature is gray literature is conference papers thesis dissertations all those things that are data but they are not published unpublished sources how do you find gray literature clinicaltrial.gov clinicaltrials.gov that's a website that's where you can find doar these are the websites and the places where i can actually find or you can actually find the gray literature so once you have all this information you copy paste every single you are a new person and you follow the strategy so this is it for today let's continue from here in the next session so that we complete everything about review and you become an expert in systematic reviews thank you before you leave if you like this video don't forget to hit the like button thank you